Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on plant tissues, organs and systems, and in particular, focusing on plant tissues. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to this tutorial on plant tissues, which is lesson one of two under the title Plant Tissues, Organs and Systems. So this tutorial is going to be a really simple one. We're just going to break down the macromolecular structure of plant tissues down into its basic components and explore each of those. So in previous tutorials, we've already had a look at the basic structure of your plant cell. But in today's tutorial, we're going to be having a look at the structures of plant tissue. So these words might look a little bit foreign to you, but please don't panic because in five minutes or so, it's all going to be a breeze. And perhaps you can go back to this checklist at the end of the tutorial and just make sure that you understand each of these words. Um, Okie dokie. So next slide. Um, Right, so first of all, we have our plant tissue. And you can see that over here, we have our basic components of our plant cell. And you've come across this before. Um, in a previous tutorial, we contrasted plant cell structure to animal cell structure. So if you've forgotten this, perhaps go back and have a look at that. Um, but your plant cell is made up of the cell wall, cytoplasm, nucleus, vacuole, and chloroplast, and those are your basic units there. But on top of that, we're going to have a larger outlook on the plant tissue and have a look at the other features um, that we can see. So first of all, let's go on to have a look at the epidermal tissue that plants are covered by. So if you ever get confused with this word, I have a little trick for you. So Epidermal. So dermal generally means something that is in sheathing something else, so kind of like your skin. So often when we refer to the skin, we refer to it as being a dermal tissue because it's that's you know that's the skin, that's the outer covering of, of humans. So in the same way, plants are covered by dermal tissue and it's epidermal tissue because epi means outside, whereas endo would mean inside. So your outside covering tissue of the plant. So epidermal tissue, that's kind of how I remember it. That might help you. And so the epidermal tissue has a waxy cuticle. So you can see that above the upper epidermis, the upper epidermis is this kind of structure outlined in the thick blue lines. We have the cuticle, which is just above it. And this cuticle is a waxy cuticle. So it's covered by a waxy coat. And I'm sure you've had a look at a leaf at some point in your life and realised that it does have quite a smooth, waxy covering to it. And that's the cuticle that you're feeling. So this cuticle has two major functions that I need you to remember. So first of all, it covers the plant to decrease water loss by evaporation. Because if you didn't have the cuticle, then you wouldn't have a waxy layer covering the plant and water would be able to evaporate out, which wouldn't be very efficient for the photosynthesis process. So we don't have that when we have a cuticle covering. We reduce water loss by evaporation. And moreover, the cuticle is transparent to all light so that as much light as possible can make its way through. So if the cuticle wasn't transparent, we would kind of get a an absorbance of light here, it wouldn't penetrate through to the chloroplasts, which are further below the epidermis. So this is another really important feature of the cuticle. So that's your two important features there of the cuticle. Your, it decreases water loss by evaporation, and it's transparent to allow as much light as possible to make its way through down to the plant cells, where we can then get photosynthesis occurring in the chloroplasts. 
Right, okay, so next structure is the palisade mesophyll. So the palisade mesophyll is where photosynthesis occurs, and you can see that indeed the palisade mesos mesophyll contains um, um, many plant cells that are lined up in a very regular array. And therefore, any light that penetrates through the leaf is going to hit these plant cells, and we can get photosynthesis occurring here. So if photosynthesis occurs in the palisade mesophyll, that means that it's going to need to contain many, many, many chloroplasts, which are situated close to the top of the leaf, allowing it to receive as much light as possible. Now, if you have a think, if these palisade, if the palisade mesophyll was located perhaps in this section, that would be less efficient because it's going to be further away from direct sunlight. So we put it as close to the epidermis as we can. So you see, if you use common sense here, it's not necessary for you to just rote learn random bits of information because you can kind of figure it out. You can kind of think, well, I know the palisade mesophyll is responsible for photosynthesis, so that means we're probably going to find it in the layer closest to the leaf's surface. Right, okay. So next slide. So plants have a spongy mesophyll as well. So just note here, I forgot to mention on the last slide, that that was your epidermal layer up here. Then you have your mesophyll, and then you have your lower epidermal layer, because obviously, you know, your leaf. If I attempt to draw a leaf, well, that was a poor attempt, but you know what I mean. You know what I'm getting at. Um, so this would be your upper epidermal surface here, and this would be your lower epidermal surface, so just the top and the bottom of the leaf, and then in the middle you're going to get your mesophyll. So we've already had a look at the palisade mesophyll. Uh, I'll just get rid of that drawing because it really is poor. Um, so we've already had a look at the palisade mesophyll, um, but now we're going to have a look at the spongy mesophyll. So note how the cells in the spongy mesophyll are much more spaced apart than the cells in the palisade mesophyll. Now that gives you another big clue here. So there are gaps between the cells and the spongy, spongy mesophyll because this allows um, a greater surface area for gas exchange. So actually, this is the area where gas exchange occurs. So spongy mesophyll is where we get our gas exchange. And the fact that the cells are spaced so far apart allows this great surface area for gas exchange to occur, whereas the palisade mesophyll is where photosynthesis occurs, right? So those are your two contrasting areas of the mesophyll that you really need to remember and you can't get confused about. So spongy mesophyll, um, cells are spaced further apart, that's where we get gas exchange, um, and then your palisade mesophyll is your regular array of chloroplasts near the surface of the leaf where we're going to get lots of photosynthesis. Now, other structures in plant tissue include xylem and phloem. So this is the transport system of the plant. So water, food and ions are transported by the xylem and phloem in a plant. So the xylem transfers water and mineral ions. And it is a vascular bundle that transports water and ions to the leaf whereas the phloem transfers food, and it transfers food away from the leaf. So we have two kind of contrasting systems. Xylem is going towards the leaf, phloem away from the leaf. So just to make this a little clearer, let's have a look at some diagrams. So the left diagram shows our xylem. Oopsie, I did not mean to draw on that. That's our xylem, and the right diagram is the phloem. So Xylem and phloem. So xylem is transforming, uh, sorry, transforming, is transporting our water and minerals, whereas the phloem is transporting organic molecules. So the xylem, so we'll just contrast the two. So the xylem has no end between cells. So by that, what I mean is that, you see, there is no separating kind of boundary between cells, whereas um, phloem has end walls. So therefore, it perhaps allows more control of movement of its organic molecules within this system. So xylem is one way only. It transports water and minerals to the leaf. 
Whereas phloem is a two-way movement of glucose, so it can go either a, to the leaf or away from the leaf. And xylem, so the outer cells are not living in xylem, whereas in phloem, cells are living. So those were just some contrasts of xylem and phloem. And finally, let's have a look at this last stuck structure. So the meristem is a site of cell division in the plant. So it's this part right at the tip of the plant. So that is your zone of cell division, whereas here we have our zone of cell elongation. And this here would be our zone of cell differentiation. So if given a diagram like this, you'd be expected to know that this is the meristem and this is your zone of cell division. So that is all today. We've um, had a look at all of these various tissues. And as I Briefly, sorry, I forgot to mention here, the meristem is always found at the tip of the growing plant and shoots. Um, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, yes, so we've covered all of these plant um, structures here and had a look at their functions. So do go back perhaps to the diagram on the first few slides and have a look at that and make sure you can label and describe the functioning of each of these structures. And that is all for today, so thank you very much and I'll see you for our next tutorial. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.